Hi, this is Ernie with Smooth On, and I'm here with Kevin from Smooth On. And we are here today to introduce a new series of videos called Molds of Nature, where we take something from the environment, from the outdoors, and try to bring it to life inside your home or your office or in a school or a different type of setting. So today we're going to talk about this beautiful Zen water feature, and Kevin's going to take us through the steps on how we get from soup to nuts. Kevin, could you start us off, please? Sure. It all kind of started with a trip, a uh, snorkeling trip to the Dominican Republic. Right. And uh, I enjoy snorkeling, I enjoy the ocean, I enjoy the sand, I enjoy everything about it. So I wanted to kind of capture some of that greatness and bring it back so right. that it could always be on vacation in my office. Sure, I mean, most people do dream about vacation when they're inside their office. So let's walk through the process. You, you know, you're dreaming of being on the beach, you're thinking of sand. So now you want to make a mold of sand. It sounds a little difficult, I mean, because sand is constantly moving, it's, it's not necessarily a medium that people w will typically work with when casting. So how did you overcome any, uh, any of those obstacles? Well, after we finally played around with our design a couple of times, which is the great thing about using sand, we could made a design, didn't like it, leveled it all out, did it again, mm -hmm. but all that ease of manipulating the sand made it really difficult to try to pour rubber on. Okay. So we had to find a sealer, something that would keep the sand in place. We tried a number of different things, waxes, soap-based sealers, nothing seemed to work until we tried the spray-on acrylic. Okay. So that the spray-on acrylic was what was able to create the sand so that it wouldn't move and you were able to pour the mold over it. Absolutely. It gave us a nice thin crust over it that allowed Good. us to be able to pour rubber on it. Excellent. Okay. So now you have your idea of your sand. It's sealed and you poured rubber. Can you tell me a little bit about the product that you poured over it and the process? Sure. We chose Mold Star 16 to start because of its fast uh, curing time. The pot life was very short. And we figured that being the sand being so porous, mm -hmm. if we had a rubber on there that would sit on there for a long time before it cured, it would absorb into all the porosity. But being that it's only six minutes, it allowed us to make a mold, capture all the detail, but not have to worry about the rubber soaking all the way through. But any issues demolding or, or you know pulling apart from the mold before you cast in it? No, I'm really glad we went with this material because it was a very easy to demold afterwards. Um, with silicones, you don't need release agent, which mm -hmm. was another benefit, and it turned out to be a fantastic choice, and it was really easy to demold. Um, now, from there, you have your mold. Take me through the casting process. How did what? How and what did you cast on the mold? Well, again, we needed to f pick a material that would be able to hold up to being a water feature, first of all, okay. being able to go outside or inside, look aesthetically pleasing, so we decided on going with GFRC. Okay. For those not familiar, explain to, to, the, to the viewers GFRC. GFRC is glass fiber reinforced concrete. It's concrete that's reinforced with glass fiber, alkali resistant fiber, but also has a polymer in it. In this case, it's Forton VF774. Okay. So you went ahead and what's typical with GFRC is you're gonna spray a face coat and then put a backer mix. Face coat, no fiberglass involved with that, and then the backer mix has Correct. fiberglass. Okay. So then from there, demolding that piece, the, the cast piece of concrete off of the mold, any issues with that? No, again, going back to the great properties of the silicone, no release agent was needed. It peeled off, it left nothing behind. It was really, really easy. And now we had uh, our, our first one, mm -hmm. but it was really easy now to make more castings and use it as a production mold. Great. Uh, okay, so then now how, how do we put this all together? Coming from the mold with your cast piece, uh, what do we have here? Well, again, more challenges in trying to design something that was both aesthetically pleasing, but also functioning. So what we found was we got this containment field from a local hardware store. It's actually used for uh, a containment for hot water heaters. Okay. So we ended up using that. We acquired a pump from a local uh, fish store or aquarium mm -hmm. supply store. We drilled our hole right through the center and used some tubing and was, we have our water feature. Great. I love the texture of it. I love how the texture comes off of the mold. It looks like sand. Uh, going back to the casting process, you use some type of probably an iron oxide pigment for this. Yeah, we found an iron oxide pigment that looked exactly like the original sand we had. We mixed it in there and we got a great casting. Great, it looks great. I'd love to see it working though. Let's go for it. All right, I'm gonna turn it on then. Excellent. I can feel myself being transported away to the beach right now, Kevin. 
Yep, me too. <laughs> we want to thank you very much for viewing our Molds of Nature series. I'm Ernie with Smooth On. And this is Kevin. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.